Brian, how are you doing? You surprised at the volatility we've seen or the fact that the Dow is down over 760 points today and came back? No, I think this is a uh, very low volatility after March. I mean, this is like child's play. Come on, Nicole. Uh, we've been through a lot over the course of the last couple months. But I think what you have to remember right now and putting the sell-off in context that we had last week is we just had the 50 best trading days ever in the stock market. I mean, we were literally up at 1.46% on the S&P from the trough back in March. So I suspect at some point you were going to get some profit taking, and you definitely saw that last week on Thursday. But the reality of this market is it's still very, very underinvested. So there's just too many money managers that missed this whole move that have been sitting in cash and haven't been bullish like I have on your show every time I'm here, Nicole, which it's hard being right, but, you know, being bullish was the right move, and I think a lot of managers weren't. The nervous part about it, being bullish was the right move, right? Since March 23rd, you killed it, folks, if you were able to at least get some of that. And it's true, and it's impossible to time the market, but if you hang in there and you stick to what it is that you believe, um, you can be right, you know? Um, you know, the, T Ted Weisberg on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange would say even a broken clock's right twice a day. You know, you never know which way this market's going, and bullish has definitely been the right way, and I love it. I love it for the 401ks and IRAs. I love the last decade. It's been beautiful. Um, so that being said now, what's the what's the action going forward? How do you um, do anything now? What do you, how do you navigate? You know, that's a good question. So I think the thing you have to be careful of is in tech stocks, big cap tech right now is just so much more overvalued than the rest of the market. I mean, with the, the whole pandemic, obviously most tech stocks fared better. If you're Amazon, you actually, it was great for your business. So I think you have to be really careful. We're an asset allocator. So we put money in all different asset classes and you really want to take advantage of all the asset classes that are down now. And if you start looking at industrials, uh, you start looking at financials, energy, all of those moves off the bottom have been bigger than technology, and all those stocks are a lot cheaper than technology right now. So they have much more runway for growth, and not to mention you're getting paid a lot better. The dividends are so much more attractive on your value stocks than they are on growth stocks. So, and when you buy the S&P right now, specifically, I always say this, but it's a tech fun and drag. It's like 30% plus tech. The big five names are now 20% of the entire portfolio, so you're not getting real diversification. So I think it's really important to spread your money out right now. We're definitely in a bull market, but I think being diversified here is going to pay bigger dividends than concentrating in the S&P and just owning tech. Okay. You're talking about industrials, energy, financials. Almost every day we're down. It's led by energy and financials. Um, you know, it's, it's not an easy game, right? What names do you get into? How do you figure this out? I don't think you have to be that smart here because to your point, I mean, look, like energy sold off 10% last week, but you got to remember, I mean, you're up like 67% from the bottom on energy stocks. That's how big the move is. So of course the sell off is going to be bigger. Um, but I think if you look at indexes here, like if you own the XLE that has Exxon, Chevron, all the big names, I think you just have to be in the sector right now. And I really love indexing that are capitalization weighted because of that. And I've talked about this before. It's just because the cream's going to rise to the top. The companies that are going to do the best are going to be the highest capitalization weighting in those indexes. So you just really need to get the sector right right now, as opposed to picking individual stocks. You know, same thing with financials. I mean, by owning the index, you're going to own JP Morgan. You're going to own Bank of America. You're going to own Citigroup. They're all going to benefit from a reacceleration of growth. And it's already starting to happen. If you look at interest rates around the world, they're actually starting to go up. Everyone's focused on the Fed and keeping rates low, but that's only <laughs> short-term rates. Longer-term rates are starting to go up. And that's very, very good for bank margins, as we know. So I, I think all those trends are already happening. And just being in those sectors diversified, you're going to definitely benefit here. Well, I was watching Treasury yields here at home. And I know they were improving. But today, at one point, we saw Treasury yields at the lowest level um, in a month. So what did you think of that? What is, how do you look at that? And how do you turn and look at the market? Well, you know, that's, you can see the dollars weakened a lot here because of that, right? Because before you could park money in the U.S. and you're getting a much better interest rate than you were globally. But that spread starting to come in. Like you take the two-year two German Bund, it was like a 200 basis point spread from the uh, two-year Treasury at the beginning of the year. Now it's only 80 basis points. So as, you know, international yields start to go up, 
That's, that means a weaker dollar, and that's actually very good for things like commodities, uh, emerging markets, where valuations are a lot cheaper than U.S. right now. We've had king dollar for like a decade. I think those days might be over now. And I think with interest rates going up around the world, it's making other places in the world a lot more competitive. And that's going to see some flow going around the world and not just here in the U.S. And I think it's really important when you're diversifying your portfolio. Right, right. I mean, you're a buy the dip guy. I mean, right. Even the tech stocks that have run up, do you still like some of those? I know you were trying to pick some of the others that have been beaten down more because maybe you have some more room to run. Do you, I mean, do you buy the dips? Do you still, you know, delve into some of the tech names? I think you have to have in your portfolio because the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent, is the old saying, Nicole. But Amazon now trades at 100 right. times earnings. You know, you've gotten like 10 years of e -com good news in e-commerce growth literally in the, in the span of a couple months. So it's just like so much good news is baked into those stocks. They can keep going up here. But, man, when valuations get that high, I learned this during the tech bubble, when they sell off, it's going to hurt. Uh, you know, you can see like 50% declines in some of these stocks that have just done phenomenally well just because they're priced so high now. So, yeah, I think you definitely have a position there, but start spreading your money out. Don't make the mistake of getting too tech heavy. Same thing happened back in 1999. And remember when the tech bubble burst, a lot of other asset classes started to do really well. Meanwhile, tech just got hammered. So this is like the time to be diversified if you're ever going to be diversified. Are you a fan of these work from home names too? That some of them that really, you know, been high flyers. It's over. <laughs> They're already up huge, and I don't think we're going to be zooming as much as the economy reopens. So, um, you saw that with Zoom about a week or two ago. I mean, they literally doubled the revenue forecast, and the stock didn't even move. So, you know, the market's already priced a lot of that in. Grocery stocks, another one. I've gone to the grocery store, you know, in the last two, three months more than I have in the last ten years. Um, so, you know, the market already knows that it's priced in. You have to start thinking about what is going to do well as the economy is reaccelerating. And again, as we're flying more, we're driving more. That means energy prices are going to go up. That means those stocks are going to benefit, right? Interest rates go up. Financials are going to benefit. Uh, production goes up. Indu you know, industrial production goes up. So all those names are cheap. They're going to be the biggest beneficiaries of a market rebound or an economy rebound. And also, they're just cutting their costs right now. So as revenues go up, they're going to be more profitable with less revenue than they were before because they're getting leaner and meaner right now. And that's just why the, the market in general is just such a good deal right now because companies got razor focused on the bottom line while we're in this pandemic. Right. Yeah, me too. I've been to the grocery store more than ever in my oh. life. Ryan Payne, nice to see you. President Payne Capital Management, thanks so much.